Hi, I'm Mike with House on the Mend, and in this video we're going to be reviewing the Garden Joy 40 volt two speed pivoting head leaf blower that also has an extension for getting up into your gutters. So let's get started. House on the Mend. Now I'm not paid nor sponsored by Garden Joy, but just like in previous videos, they reached out and sent me this model free for my unbiased review. So let's go inside, unpackage it, and see what comes in the box. So here's everything that comes in the box. You get a shoulder strap, which is a pretty cool idea. Then we have the main blower motor itself, and it's on this pivoting brace. So you can put it to any position that's comfortable for you, and then turn down both of these uh, side pieces to tighten it and keep it in that one area. That's really novel. I could see that being cool for trying to get up and maybe blow out uh, gutters when the leaves are falling. You have this middle extension pole that can be removed if you want it to be uh, only as long as the handle and the blower motor or if you want to be more comfortable and be able to stand upright and have uh, the blower motor down on the ground then you can use that. I think I'll be doing all my testing with this on it, but it's nice to have that option. Now with the handle itself, I noticed a couple things. One, it's got this rubberized grip, which I really like, and that seems to be a standard issue on these Garden Joy tools. If you recall from their drill, it's got a wonderful rubberized grip on it. Now as I look at the buttons here, I see on and off and then low and high and if you look over here on the motor the low setting is 300 cubic feet per minute and the high setting is 500 cubic feet per minute and that works out to 95 miles an hour to 125 miles an hour of wind assembly looks pretty straightforward there are electric plugs on the pole and on the motor itself that line up with um, the handle. That slides right in and then this collar is threaded. That's real easy. Same thing with the motor. Right into place and tighten down the collar. Now this is a 40 volt unit so you get one 40 volt one and a half amp hour battery, uh, lithium ion batteries inside of it. Uh, I love that it comes with a uh, battery life indicator. It looks like we have three out of the four available bars in shipping. Now, when I look on top of the battery, I notice a positive and a negative, and then there's also uh, a section right here that's marked C for like communication. And as I look at this one right here, it says T, which would lead me to believe it's a temperature sensor, but there is no actual metal clip in here that uh, the bars of the tool would go into. And to demonstrate what I'm talking about, you can see on the tool there is the positive and the negative, uh, but there is no other um, bars coming out that receive the battery. So that means the tool itself is not going to be capable of communicating uh, to the battery. The battery seems to have that capability, but the tool is just going to draw power from the battery with no communication for uh, overheating or anything like that. Now if we compare the 40 volt to their standard uh, 21 volt you can see it is taller um, but as far as the top there doesn't seem to be much of a difference I wonder if this tool would slide on there yeah it will and it'll run so you want to be careful you don't burn out any of your 21 volt motors with this 40 volt battery so this is what they call the fast charger and it's a little bit different than their 21 volt version that has a much smaller transformer with the plug built right into it. So if we plug that in here, then this end goes right into this RCA jack right on the battery itself. And when you plug it in, I notice that this light turns red 
it's going to turn green when it's fully charged and there is no activity on the battery life indicator. So I'm just going to start my timer here and we'll see how long it takes to charge and I'll report back if there's any alarming amount of heat buildup during the charge. Well, as you can see here, it only took nine minutes to charge the battery from three bars to fully charge with no discernible increase in heat. So let's do a test on the high speed and see how long this battery lasts. Well, after a little over 16 minutes, the unit shut itself off. Uh, it is about 10 to 15 degrees warmer than the ambient temperature. It's pretty hot in our garage. Um, and so the battery is definitely warmer, about 110. Now, if we push the button, we'll see that the unit will come back on, but the light is flashing over here, I think meaning a dead battery. And there you go, it shuts right back off. So let's pull the battery out. Yeah, it's a pretty hot battery. And let's check. And we're not getting any bars. <laughs> All right, so um, let's let this cool down and then I'll test how long it takes to fully charge. So it took an hour and a half to fully charge the depleted battery and it rose in temperature by about 15 degrees. So. Uh, let's do some actual testing. Now, first thing is you can see in this picture, this unit with the extender and the battery attached weighs 4.3 pounds. And with the extender piece on, the tool is balanced way forward of the grip, right around this first union area. So when you are holding the tool, you can feel it uh, pushing away and wanting to go down like this. And it's fairly uncomfortable on the wrist and on the elbow to hold it upwards uh, to keep it from falling down and hitting the ground. So I wish it was better balanced uh, in that way. But nonetheless, uh, let's try out the blower. Let's see how loud it is out here uh, in the atrium area of our house. And we'll just start with the first setting. Here's the higher setting. And then one time on the power button to turn it all the way off. So the unit works great. Uh, it's blowing, it's no problem. Uh, as you see in this video here, I also tried it with the motor turned up a little bit and it seems to work just as well uh, with a little bit of upward angle. So I could see in a cobblestone path like this where you have sand that's brushed in between the stones that it might be better off to pivot up the head a little bit so that you're not blowing down directly into the cracks between the blocks and thus blowing out your sand. Now our sand's been in for a long time. It's pretty much um, fused itself together really. We don't have much issue with that. Um, and if you're on concrete, of course, it might be better to have it straight like this so you're just pushing and getting all that force uh, blowing out. Let's do some more testing. This time we'll set up the wand cam. Let's try having the nozzle straight on the turf and see if it works any better.
Well, I was hoping to wait for the leaves on this beautiful ash tree to turn color and fall so I could test the blower further, but we're well into October. I've had this blower for a month, and as you can see, nothing. I was intrigued by the concept of the head pivoting downward like this so you can clean out your gutter. So I took a measurement and from the handle to this tip is 32 inches. So if you want to know whether or not you're going to be able to reach your gutters without a ladder, just take a ruler, bring it out to 32 inches and go outside and check. I think that's enough testing for me to give you my pros and cons. First, the pros. So this leaf blower works great. Uh, it's very lightweight. I really like the grip. I think the pivoting head is very novel. It was really only useful in my testing um, if I pivoted it up one spot or uh, had I had gutters to pivot it all the way down. Um, otherwise, I just used it straight like this for most of the time. Now, while the actual battery life test wasn't all that impressive at the high speed, I found the majority of my testing was perfectly suited towards the regular speed. And uh, I shut on and off the motor as I walked around from place to place. And in all the testing I did, which you saw heavily edited uh, cuts of, that only lowered the battery by one bar. So I think in real world use, uh, this 40 volt battery has great battery life. Now the cons. This extension piece makes the unit very uncomfortable to hold when using it in the normal fashion. In fact, when I was going around doing the testing, as you can see in this picture here, I actually had the grip underneath my arm like this and was just waving it around because it was uncomfortable to hold. So, uh, I will say if you take the extension off and just use it like this, as you can see in this picture, I'm a six foot tall and I can comfortably have the blower right uh, next to the ground where I need it without that extension. And then it was much better balanced and much more comfortable. So I would definitely leave out the extension unless you are blowing leaves from something like a gutter or off of a roof. Now I did find the motor to have a lot louder whine than my other leaf blowers, even though the motor itself is all the way down to the ground. As you can see in this video here with the battery attached to the tool, it's much more difficult to read the battery life indicator because the button is about half obscured by the plastic housing. And the final con, I think it's a shame that this battery is 40 volt because that means it is incompatible with the other Garden Joy tools that I've reviewed. However, it does fit on those 21 volt tools, which I think is pretty dangerous. Um, I have other tools made by Black & Decker and Ryobi that I have both uh, their basically they're 20 or 18 and then they're 40 volt versions and those batteries are not compatible, definitely don't fit. There's no way to mistake them. And I could see that happening here. So I wish they would uh, remake the size or shape of the battery or just figure out a way uh, to use the same 21 volt batteries from their other tools. So if you found this video helpful in making a purchasing decision, will you please give it a thumbs up? It's really helpful to the channel. Also, please consider subscribing. I'm working really hard to put out good quality tool review videos. There's a lot more to come and it's really easy. You just log in and hit subscribe or if you follow me on Rumble, follow. It's very helpful to the channel. Thank you to everyone that's been doing that. I'd also like to thank Garden Joy for sending me out this tool with no preconceived agreement on what I was going to say. I think it takes a lot of courage for a company to do that and I respect Garden Joy for that. Until next time, thank you for watching.